too quiet. Because Mr. Erez will talk. You can look at the book, but you cannot talk. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. Father, your name is truth. Your word is life. And your way is everlasting. We have no right in and of ourselves to claim anything. We have no right to say anything. Lord, salvation belongs to you. Father, we can't save ourselves. Jesus, we are lost in and of ourselves. We are like animals, like beasts without you. In our span on this earth is a vapor without you. Oh God, don't just stamp our eyes with eternity. Let it be the working out of our hands, the attitude in our hearts, our constant thoughts. Let it always be to eternity. Forsaking all others and uniting to you for as long as we live on this earth. Oh God, forgive us for any wandering thoughts, adulterous hearts, or lacking purpose, vision. Jesus, we are undone outside of you. Oh God, have mercy. Father, forgive. Father, refresh and empower in Jesus' name whatever you speak, Lord. Behold thy servant. Do with us, with me right now, what you want to do in Jesus' name. So you come again. Amen. Go to Romans 8. Is God still good? Yes. 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 Even this time? Yep. How about tomorrow? Yep. How about yesterday? Yep. How about when your life was an utter mess? Is he still good? Yes. What about when you denied him? Is he still good? Yep. What about when we are faithless? Is he still faithful? Mm -hmm. Remember that. I'm presenting to you, some of you guys heard, and I posted it on YouTube. I had a PTSD episode. I asked the Lord for healing, and I felt yesterday that he healed me from PTSD. But there's a grief walk. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, I am redeeming. One of my long-standing prayers has been, Lord, show me what it means that you are my redeemer. Well, let's just say it was 12 years of me learning what it meant. I experienced every struggle I can think of that and, I, and I'm like Lord this is really bad and then he delivered me from it and he said I'm showing you with every challenge that you're having I am proving to you behold go al My Redeemer lives and is alive. Job 19. I know that my Redeemer lives. 
and in the end, when my flesh burns, I will see him face to face. I will see him face to face. It's a Hebrew song called Alichai. I don't remember the song anymore. Um, So, I posted how um, and I had another episode yesterday at work. I visited Leanne's grave a few times since she died. And I wept. I broke down. Not because she died. Oh, she's in glory. But because of death. Do you understand you are not created to die? Guys, do you understand that? Do you, you're not created to die. You're not created to suffer death. Do you understand that the living God who made you, made you to live because he lives? Do you understand that the groanings that you have is death? Do you understand that every opportunity that you are trying to make to alleviate your groaning is contrary to the very nature, to the very attempt that God is trying to say, listen, my creation is groaning. Why can't you groan with me? When Jesus wept, John eleven thirty five. 35, he wasn't weeping that he lost his friend. There, that, may be, that may be true. You know what he was weeping at? Unbelief. And death itself. The effect of death. The effect of sin. The effect of this world. Romans 8. For I could, uh, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly awaits with anticipation for God's Son to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly. But! Anytime you see in the scripture, but, you better listen. Because it's you. But because of him who subjected it, him being the devil, not him being God, he allowed it to happen. Why? 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 Very important. In the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Now, in this hope we were saved, yet hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. Are you groaning? <coughs> Dude, are you groaning? Do you hurt within yourself? Is your longing to be in the presence of God? I'll, I'll be the first to admit, God, take me home. Because it is much better to be in your presence than to be here on this earth. But yet, Lord, I will stay here because I love you and you have a mission for me. If that groaning is not in your heart, you better get on your face and go before God and say, Lord, why am I not groaning as your creation groans? Why am I not weeping as you weep? Why doesn't it hurt you when people are not walking in faith or trust or belief? I put out a video recently. The Lord showed it to me, and I'm like, oh my goodness, on the whole vaccine issue. And I posted a reply to somebody who said to me, the vaccine was a 
dry run of the mark. I want to suggest to you that those who ran out to get the vaccine have the mark of the beast upon their heart. Yeah, I said it. And here's why I said it. Because if you are trusting in man to save you, if you are trusting in the government to save you, oh, there's, a, there's an illness, pandemic, there's a situation. Oh, I lost my job, I need to go find another one. Oh, there's no food in the cupboards, I need to go get food. Sorry guys, you got the mark of the beast. Done. If it's not on your forehead, it's on your hand. Why? You trust man to save you. You trust man to order you, and you trust the work of your flesh for your provision. Amen. And you're not groaning with creation. Instead, you're not waiting for him. You're not resting in him. Whether you get the vaccine or not is irrelevant. Where's your heart? God will bring into judgment, bring into light, every, every, every thought in your heart. Why? Creation's waiting for, the, for, for that. Because it groans with the spirit. Which utters groanings too deep for words. The next section. We don't know how to pray. Romans 8, 26. The same way the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness. Because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he who searches the hearts knows the Spirit's mindset. Because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Therefore, and this is the crux of my message. Rather... The Lord's message. We know that all things work together for the for the good. Not yours, or excuse me, not, not the good you want, but for your good. For the good of those who love God. Those who are called according to his purpose. If you feel like you're dying, all your groanings, all your sufferings, all your pain, turmoil, labor, frustrations. Say thank you, Lord. Because those groanings are intended to draw you to the heart of God. If he causes you to laugh, laugh. If he causes you to weep, you better weep. If he causes you to sing, sing. If he causes you to be silent, be silent. If he causes you to proclaim, go proclaim. If he causes you to pour out for another, and that could be anybody, children or someone in the hospital or even your neighbor who is, let's face it, an enemy of the gospel. And do it with all your might. Romans 12. In Job, and this is, he says that God gives and God takes away. Blessed be naked I came to this earth and naked I'll leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He knew that all, we know that all things work together for good. If you can do it as a math equation, all things, it means your negative things that happen in your life. Plus, big, put a big plus sign and all the wonderful blessings that you get equals God's perfect good for you. For his kingdom, not yours. Sorry, you're not your own. Ezekiel chapter 9. Go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Verse 4. Are you on fire yet? Because Jesus is coming, guys. He said, Oh, that the earth would be ablaze now. Oh, that the Son of Man would find faithfulness. Many a man, Proverbs, proclaim a steadfast love. But a faithful man, who can find? That is a messianic proverb right there. Because Jesus is looking for somebody to be faithful. So you got depression. Do you cry out to Jesus? So you struggle. Do you cry out to Jesus? So your job stinks. Do you cry out to Jesus? So you're tired. Do you cry out to Jesus? So your husband fights with you. Do you cry out to Jesus? So your wife is nasty with you. Do you cry out to Jesus? So your kids argue with you and put up back talk. Do you cry out to Jesus? 
So your kids yell at you. Do you fall on your face and say, oh, Jesus, I can't handle this anymore? So your boss cannot stand you. Do you cry out to Jesus? So your parents reject you. Do you cry out to Jesus? So you see social situations just, oh, just utter impossibilities. Do you cry out to Jesus? So you don't have food in your cupboards. Do you cry out to Jesus? So you have family members that are not saved. Do you cry out to Jesus? Is everything in your nature and being part of the eternal groaning to Jesus? Let's face it, guys. We were not created to die. But because we are on this earth and God gave his son to us. Look, we're off the boat. We are on the boat to get people off the boat. Think the Titanic. I've used that illustration. Look, you're going to get off the Titanic. Plain and simple. God forbid you get off the Titanic without saving anybody. And I'm not saying you save, but that if you have not done your part, if you walk in, Lord, I've done all I don't know to do. I've tried, and I feel like nobody's listened. I, I, Lord, please bring into account my faithfulness because I feel like I haven't done anything. Let him be the judge. But woe be to you. They said, oh, look at what I did. And he said, where were you with that one person who was crying? And I put you in their path. And you said nothing. God help you. Guys, we all have had moments in our, in our life. If God shows that to you, repent. Say, Lord, teach me to do it better. He's a good father. He'll chasten you. And he'll bring you back. And he'll give you another opportunity. Because he wastes nothing. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. Pass through the city of Jerusalem. The Lord said to him, this is Ezekiel. Uh, excuse me, man clothed in a linen with a writing equipment at his side. Put a mark on the foreheads of the men who do what? Sigh, sigh and groan over all the detestable practices committed in it. He spoke as I listened to the others, passed through the city after him to start killing, do not show, pity or spare them. Slaughtered the old man, the young men and women, as well as the older men. Okay, I'm gonna rock your world here and little children. But do not come near anyone who has the mark. Why? Because they stink and groan. If you do not have tears, you better ask God for it. And not just tears for your own stupid self-pity. I'm sorry. Harsh language. What about those who hurt? What about those who blaspheme the name of Jesus and they're entering into a Christless eternity? And where are you? Complaining about your own problems. Guys, I'm not picking on anybody. This is a message from the Lord. He's saying, I've got a job for you. Stop with your own problems. Yes, you got problems. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. What about the wicked? Doesn't matter to them. They got afflictions, but many are yours. But the Lord will deliver you from them all if you call upon his name to be saved. Stop moping. Stop toying with trifles. Stop with politics. Stop with news stories. Stop. Enough is enough. Let it be that you crawl to get a person to hear the name of Jesus. Stop being embarrassed. It is uncomfortable. Who cares about your discomfort? God doesn't care of your discomfort. He cares of your faithfulness. Did you try? Constantly I tell my kids, did you give it a shot? I did the best I could. Okay, let me show you a better way. If you say, well, I can't do it. May God have mercy upon your soul because he will say, so you didn't even try? You want to tell me you didn't even try? You knew my will. My command is this, eternal life, John 17. Excuse me, John 14. I shared it two weeks ago or a week ago. God's command is eternal life. Guys, it's about Jesus. Mark 16, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus and him crucified. Be it for somebody who never heard, be it for somebody who's a Christian all their life. Yes, I've heard the story. Jesus came, lived and died, and rose from the grave. The cross is for now. 
Resurrection is for now. <coughs> Stop living as if, oh, well, my husband is a drunk and he has problems, but I love Jesus. There's power in the cross and there's power in the resurrection. The resurrection is the power coming from the, the resurrection is the result of the cross. The cross is the needful investment in the resurrection. They're, they are two sides of the same coin. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Why aren't we drawing upon that fountain? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn forth from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that lamb in his day. And there may I, though sinful be, wash all my sins away. Precious is the flow that flows from Emmanuel's veins. It makes you whiter than snow. In your today, in your tomorrow. Guys, I confess. I have challenges with my emotions, with my mind, memories. I'm broken in an area I don't want to be. And I'm sorry that I've resisted that. And I submit that before you. I will be broken. I don't care what it costs my life. I don't care what it costs my reputation. I don't care if People say, look, Erez, I'm sorry, this is really bothering, this is really affecting your work, we need to get rid of you because of your faith, challenges, whatever. That's fine. God before me, who can be against me? For I'm convinced neither death, nor angels, principalities, powers, sword, and nakedness, nothing shall separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Folks, Amen. Amen. we don't live for here. Your life, as the scriptures say, is like a drop in the bucket. Feast on the King of Kings. He's got a table ready. Be it today, be it tomorrow, if you've never heard, cry out to Jesus. If the only thing you could do, I'll never forget Leanne was in her bed one years ago with her first after her first brain tumor she called me in the middle of the night tell me that I was working she told me the story she told me what happened she was like uh, she said she saw demons all around her she said, uh, Jesus that's all she could say and then the demons let her go then she said in the name of Jesus be gone then there was an actual cloud descending upon her she said in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus be gone and it went away she was healed she had opi opioid addiction, and she was healed. Let Jesus be the name. First thing in the morning, the last thing before you go to bed. And groan with him, because he groans. You were not made to groan. That's not what Jesus wanted. But now he desires the fellowship of the suffering with him. So that you may enjoy. Come enjoy your master's rest. If you do his will. Father, baptize us with obedience. Baptize us with holiness. Father, baptize us with, with the cross. And empower us with the resurrection and life. Jesus, you are the living savior. You are the resurrection and you live within us. Thank you, O oh Lord. May we not give up. May we see your faithfulness. Abba, that prayer that you have answered and you have told me, I am proving my faithfulness through you. Oh, Jesus, I ask now that everybody in this house would say, Jesus, I want that same request. Please prove your faithfulness through me. In Jesus' name, let it be the heart cry of every Christian. May I be a witness of your faithfulness, a testimony of your faithfulness, that you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. Be it come physical difficulty, health, 
job, whatever. Jesus, let it be done in us that we would stand that you are good and you are everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.